Hello and welcome to the Wiltshire Caravans video handover for this 2018 Eldis Avanti 574. Okay, and, uh, we'll go around the outside to start with, have a quick look round. Start at the back, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and we'll uh, try to explain everything to you. Okay, so okay, so it's got the rear brake light, high line brake light, light clusters either side, as well as the grab handles. Light clusters have the indicators, uh, reversing lights, running lights, brake lights, uh, space for number plate, and also rear corner steadies. Okay, go along the side of the van, uh, single axle, uh, as you can see there. Down here, we've got the waste pipes, so the outlet pipes there for the uh, two sinks, the kitchen, bathroom, and for the shower. And here, the very important and ever popular toilet cassette. You can just see there's no pink rinse uh, option on here. This is, comes direct from the water supply. And if I could open this without too much hassle with one hand, well, so, okay, there we have, there's, there's the uh, standard Thetford cassette. So to bring that out, lift this handle, and just pull this directly to you, okay? This thing comes out, and there's your cassette. To empty, and you'll know when to empty it because there's a light on in the toilet that shines when it's uh, needs emptying. Undo this and put it somewhere safe. You don't want that falling into the receptacle that everything else is going. And then just to empty the contents, tilt forward and press this button at the top. That will then release all of the uh, uh, air, air pressure and let everything just flow out. Okay, you'll then want to rinse out the cassette. So this slider comes back, open here, and then you can put the hose pipe in there and just give it a swirl round. You can just see in there, there's the, uh, that's the float. So that float is the uh, uh, indicator when it's full up, that will float up um, to turn the light on. Remember to close that flap, very important, slide back, rinse it round, swill it round, and then repeat the earlier process. You might have noticed there's a little bit of blue fluid in there already. To put the blue fluid in, on the cap itself, there are little areas to, uh, to measure how much you put in. You'd always check the uh, bottle to see how much you need to put in, and you can either put it directly into there, or you can put it directly into there, and then dilute if required. And then just put that back in there. Slide in, all done. Okay, as I mentioned before, single axle model. Uh, this one's got the automatic engage motor mover. There is a separate video for that. Uh, the alloy wheels torqued up to 130 Newton meters. Uh, that is important and they should be checked uh, every, every journey. Okay, above you've got the uh, microwave uh, vent. Then coming over to the uh, battery compartment. So, uh, as you can see, 110 amp air battery in here. Uh, there's your electric hookup. Here's your isolator for the motor mover. As you can see, it's fitted there. So when the electric uh, hookup is in, you cannot move, or well, you cannot engage the motor mover. Okay, you've also got a 12 volt socket and an aerial point outside there. Okay. <coughs> Next, this is where the water inlet is. And I'll go and grab the pump and show you how that works. Okay, so the water pump. To access the area, grab hold of the side, press in slightly and then slide up. Okay, then you've got the water pump itself. This is the whale water pump system. Uh, you've got one end with the pump part itself, if I can just get that out, that goes into the aqua roll. This part slides in there and then clip that down to hold it in place. This plastic cover then just covers over the, over the, the hole. That way, uh, no dirt or any other muck can get in there. 
Okay, so then, as long as your water roll is full, you're ready to take water inside the van. Down here, corner steadies, right to the front, grab handles, then you've got the typical eldest three windows at the front and the sunroof at the top. Gas locker, got the capability for two gas bottles in there. Um, quite spacious, that doesn't mean to say you have to fill it up with all the heavy stuff you can possibly get, uh, only because that doing, makes it very difficult to uh, <coughs> to check the nose weight. <coughs> Running on the Alco chassis, it's got the Al Alco ATC, so that's the Alco trailer control. Um, there's some sensors on the uh, chassis that if the caravan starts to go out of shape, uh, it would add the brakes on uh, to stabilize everything. Chances are the only time you'll really notice it is if you um, uh, go over a speed hump. Uh, you'll notice at that point it's, uh, it feels heavy for a little while. Okay, all right, go around to the other side. Here we've got gas barbecue point. So with the gas barbecue, uh, very important that you do not use that inside an awning. Uh, not good at all. Um, so underneath the lounge window, got some storage under here, uh, storage cap capacity and a 12, uh, sorry 12, a 230 volt socket which you can run into your awning. All right down here, got the weight plate information. So this particular van, it's got the Chris, Chris number, uh, the VIN number, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it also tells you the uh, massive running order. So if just with gas bottles in, uh, 1250, but maximum plated weight of 1401. It also says on there, wheel bolt torque 102 for the steel, that's the spare, or 113 uh, newton meters for the alloys. And the tire pressure on there, 58 PSI. Now, the important thing to remember is if you're using your motor mover, that PSI, this is calibrated to, for that PSI. Make sure you're there or thereabouts. Okay, so then you've got vents for the fridge and the freezer, uh, awning light, TV aerial, and this is just an, an, another locker, uh, under, external locker uh, to go under the bed. I'm going to go inside, have a little walk around and show you how things work in here. It's a stable door, which is nice, particularly useful if you've got uh, dogs or young children to either keep them in or keep them out, <laughs> whatever suits. <clears throat> okay, so a quick look around. So lounge area. Oh, gee. And kitchen. So one side you've got the microwave, the cooker, the sink, light switch, a couple of 230 volt sockets. On the side you've got uh, the, the fridge. Shower. And bathroom. Again, we'll go around a bit more quickly later. I'll try to avoid any uh, reflections. And then end bedroom, two single beds. Uh, more drawers, lots of storage space and another 230 volt socket there um tv aerial point 12 volt socket light switch etc etc and there's also one 230 volt socket down on the floor but uh, most important let's get the power on in it and get everything working so when you get into the caravan on your left hand side just by, uh, you know, as soon as you get in you've got the master control panel so you've got the first one that's your master switch, okay? That turns the, the mains on in effect, okay? At that point, you've then got your lights. I'll see if I can show you those. Yeah, lights flick on and off. And this one is your awning light, okay? So very simple with lights. There are individual light switches on these. If I could see the light switches. So they've all got individual light switches on. Doesn't look much at the moment because it's nice and light outside. Uh, but it does light up like uh, Blackpool Illuminations 
uh, at night time. So again, being British, we'll need the heating. Okay, so heating control panel. Uh, first one you come to, it looks like uh, the back end of a caravan, or it actually looks like a shape of a VW camper, but never mind. Uh, where it says 12 degrees C at the moment, press that so we can set the temperature. Uh, we've got the option of going at uh, using 2.9 amps, which will heat things up very slowly. Uh, 5.7 amps, which is more than adequate to be honest, or 11.3 amps. Now, so a lot of sites have only got 10 amps at the pole, so you're not going to be able to use that because as soon as you turn that on, you'll pop the electricity on the pole and probably for the rest of the site, which will make you very popular. Uh, so a, a recommendation is 5.7. You can use gas uh, if you wish to do so. Or if you really want to uh, make things go very quickly to start with, gas and electric. However, we've got no gas can, uh, attached on this at the moment, so we'll just go to the electric. You might be able to hear the fan going. Uh, not particularly loud, but you know, at least you know it's working. You do have the option of here just circulating the air at the outside temperature. That will just blow the air around. So if it's, if it's a warm day, that'll just blow the air around. And this is a frost setting. Uh, okay. Set the temperature that you want in the van. Very simply, touch screen up and down to whatever temperature you desire it to be in here. Okay. Now, it, it, it really is as simple as that. Okay. Now, to go back to the main menu, press the button underneath. And then you can turn the water on. So you've got the option of obviously off. Uh, eco, which is just you know, standard, give you enough water for um, washing up, etc. most of the time. 3.3 amps, if you go onto that, that's if you're going to, a couple of you are going to have a shower or whatever. But not necessarily at the same time, it's only a small shower, but you know, who am I to judge? Uh, obviously, another frost free setting. You've also got a timed boost where you can boost for 15 minutes on electric and gas, <coughs> should you require that if you're going to have a few people uh, running past and having a shower in a hurry, okay? But most of the time the eco will be sufficient or 3.3 when you're going to take a shower. To go back, back again, pump. So that's the water pump. Uh, you know we put the water pump in outside uh, into the aqua roll uh, when you want the pump, the water to come through, press on pump and you'll get the pump ready. Then it'll say pump running. Okay. I'm going to turn it off. So I don't particularly want much water coming through. Next bit, you've got a timer and then you've got uh, the amount of power available in here at the moment. 13.2 amps. Well, that doesn't surprise me at all because we do have the um, uh, all the lights on, but we are plugged into the mains. Okay. I did say about the, uh, you've got the motor movers on here, although that's a separate video. If you're not plugged in, or which you won't be when you're using the motor movers, and you're less than 12 volts on your battery, you may struggle with the motor mover. Okay, just a word of warning. So, temperature, back. Hot water, back. Pump, well this is the front screen, so pretty much all you're going to need to know about that. Okay. Next, uh, when we're talking about the water, I need to show you where the drain down valve is or drain down tap when you're winterizing this caravan. So particularly at winter, some people want to do this every time they travel, but particularly in winter, you need to drain all of the water outside and out of your caravan. Don't want any in here at all. So, in this cupboardy, 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 cupboard underneath the sink, you can see a yellow tap, that's your drain down tap. Uh, open that and open your taps, so that will drain all of the water straight out onto the floor. That's a good thing. Uh, do not keep water in here over winter. Um, I cannot uh, stress the, uh, the importance of that. Okay, so open the drain down tap. Uh, you will come to a point, and everyone does it at least once, where you'll, um, you'll, 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 you'll get to site, you'll fill up your aqua roll, you'll put your pump on, and uh, you'll be really excited. You turn the taps on and nothing really happens and all the water just drains straight onto the floor. 
you need to close your tap. Okay, <clears throat> right. Under the front bench, we have got the breaker switches and your fuse box. Um, remember I was saying if you use too much power, you might pop the, um, the pole, you know, uh, pop the electricity on the pole. If, if it pops on the inside, this is where you need to look. So it's under the bench and, and like I said, there's your fuses as well. Okay, also got the motor mover uh, power box there. Don't need to worry about that. Shouldn't do it at any stage, hopefully. Uh, and the motor movers are guaranteed for five years from when they're first registered. Okay, so into the lounge area above the left-hand side, you've got a radio uh, and CD player in here, radio CD player. You've also got a USB point and an auxiliary point. Also got there's your booster, aerial booster. Now the aerial here works for both the TV and the radio. If you want to tune your TV in, undo this nut here lift the shaft, point the directional uh, aerial the same direction as everyone else has done, and then tighten it up and retune your TV. And you'll probably have to do that every time you go somewhere different. Okay, Our speakers on both sides. I know we're in stereo, it's all very posh here, you know. Right, uh, window blinds on all of the windows. You've got fly screens and blackout blinds. When you open them back up, make sure you hold on to them. They're on a spring and they will spring back quite quite quickly um, and that can damage them. So you don't really want to do that if you can help it. Um, also, right in the corner, left-hand corner, you've got a, a TV's uh, aerial point. Uh, if I can show that way, right. aerial point and 230 volt socket. Window catches on all of the windows, simple, open them up, push, push the window open and tighten up these to keep the window open. Like I say, they've all got blackout blinds and fly screens, except this front one, there's no uh, fly screen because there's, you, you can't open the window. Okay, the here, little table pops out, so you can have a cup of coffee in the morning and put that back slide it all back in okay this is for the motor mover again separate video don't need to worry um, so kitchen area mixer tap um, you haven't got a choice on the the temperature of the water but it does make the hot water is very hot Make sure you're, you've got the right level mixing because you will scold yourself. So be, be aware that the water is very hot. So you've got two <coughs> 230 volt sockets, uh, kettle, coffee maker, toaster, whatever. Uh, light switch for just the kitchen area. Uh, then you've got your cabinets, a uh, place for your plates and your mugs. Um, that isolator is for the microwave, uh, the microwave it's just a standard 800 watt microwave to start it up press eco and then then it's a microwave i'm not going to teach you how to use a microwave cooker okay so you've got on the hob side you've got three gas burners and one electric hob um all controlled from here so you've also you've got a light there's your sparker sorry um one word of warning the electric hob the gas hob uh, grill gosh shush andrew <laughs> the the gas uh, burners won't light whilst the lid's down good thing however the electric hob may still come on so be very aware if you've got children uh, or you nudge things by accident you can turn that on and that can be quite catastrophic. You'll, you'll melt the top and it can cause sort of serious issues. However, there's an option. You've got a plug under here. So let's get the fingers out of the way, a plug under there. So you can turn that off or set, unplug it and that will prevent the uh, electric hob going on when you don't want it to. It's also a gas isolator for here. 
So if you don't want to use, uh, if you're using butane, you might want to turn it off there. If you're using propane, I just say turn everything off at the bottle and then fire up a burner for a few seconds just to um, clear, clear any issues. Okay, other side, fridge, standard Dometic fridge, power on there. Current issue on the car, on the leisure, but not the leisure battery, but the car alternator. Oh, right, so here on electric, well, we're plugged in, so that's fine. To work on gas, well, we're not on gas, it's not going to work. Also, this one is for, like I say, the alternator. Now, as long as the fridge is already cold, you can maintain the temperature of the fridge while you're traveling, as long as you've got the 13 pin or two seven pin um, adapters on your car. Uh, this is a 13 pin electric on here. Um, and if you've got that, that should make sure that the fridge stays cool. It will not cool it down from the start. It will maintain the temperature only. Now I'm talking the temperature. Change the temperature of the fridge using the, this little thermometer. Uh, I never turn mine up to five, to be honest. However, uh, some people say it freezes their lettuce. I wouldn't know, I've never put a lettuce in a fridge, it's a beer chiller. However, if you wish to do so, this is the inside of the fridge. It has a freezer compartment, which can, uh, can be removed, uh, though I wouldn't know where you would keep the ice for your gin and tonics or your Bacardi and Cokes or whatever your tipple of choice, or your ice creams, of course. Okay, above that, wardrobe with a rail for your hanging stuff <clears throat> coming through to the bathroom area so sort of mid bathrooms here so shower shower screen this mixer tap as always there's a, a clip on the top here so when traveling keep the clip down and the door will stay open but to close it then push, but make sure, particularly when traveling, that that clip is down. Okay. The light went off in the shower. I thought, was that when I put the light on? Uh, the, basically, I turned the light off there. <laughs> so lights for the toilet and shower there. See, so yeah, I can close that door off. Now you've got a nice ensuite. Don't. Toilet side, mixer tap, horrible picture in the window, in the mirror, um, glass and bowl. Right, the toilet itself, like I said, it's the uh, sound of Thetford. Uh, that's the flush. That's where the light would come on if, uh, if it's full. Oddly enough, a toilet seat. I'm not going to teach you how to use that. However, when you've done what you need to do, empty it by moving this. The slider across then make sure you bring it back again very important to close it close it back up because if you do not it is very difficult to or supposed to be impossible almost to get the cassette out of the, uh, um, uh, the outside of the van so that will make for um, some problems you might try to wrench it out and uh, and damage it okay all right so into the bedroom side like I said 230 volts there, uh, 12 volt, and I've also a uh, TV antenna point, light switch for the bedroom, again individual lights over there, lots of cupboard space, really nice, you've also got a set of drawers there, you've got storage space underneath the beds, lots of, um, and as I said on this one you've got a, an area you can get in from outside, but again lots of storage, there's the uh, Gas isolator for oops, that's for the fridge. Strange place to keep it, but there you go. And you've also got the option of sliding this door closed by taking off the uh, popper, close the door, and now you're completely secluded from the entire world. Okay. Again, it says on here a retraining strap must be used. Absolutely when the vehicle is in transit. Pretty much, that's about it. Oh, skylights, okay. So, 
a couple of different skylights in here. These ones, it's going to be, uh, this is quite difficult to do with one handed, uh, but, but apply pressure on this handle, bring it down, apply pressure, and then move, <coughs> move it to where you need it to be. Then to close, down again, apply the pressure again, but make sure these lugs have engaged. Also on here, fly screens and blackout blinds. The different one is at the front. Where it's a more traditional, press that, bring the handle down and that lifts up. I cannot stress enough though, make sure when you're leaving or traveling, make sure all the windows and all the black, um, all the skylights are closed. It's quite important. Carbon monoxide alarm, smoke alarm. Pretty much that is the 2018 Avanti 574. Uh, lovely example it is too. Uh, if you need to, any questions about the video or uh, how to operate anything, please do feel free to give us a call on 01373. 752100. Um, only too happy to help. Um, and again, thanks for watching. If you do like the video, please like and subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel. <laughs> I nearly said to have some more um, educational uh, videos, or probably to hear me making uh, more tongue twisters than I need to. Uh, not by design, but by design. Bye-bye.